Hi guys, in today's video we're going to talk about sewing pin tucks. Pin tucks are a great way to add visual interest to um, different areas of your garment. And the great thing about this is that it's just manipulating the fabric to create that interest. So there's no added embellishment or added expense or cost in using this type of technique. We have a couple great examples, the steam bib top and the boomer falls dress. Um, both use pin tucks in the design and we create those in the fabric before we place the pattern pieces. And this makes this really easy to have consistent pin tucks and make sure that you've done them right before you cut out and assemble the actual garment. So let's jump on in and you can follow along as I demonstrate how to create a few different types of pin tucks. To create pin tucks, all you need is a seam gauge or a measuring tape the fabric for your project, and then the pattern or design that you're working with. In front of us right here, I have a few examples of just some cut fabric that I'm gonna to use to demonstrate creating pin tucks before the pattern is assembled. And then I have two sleeves here to illustrate how to add some pin tucks to an existing design that you might have by extending the pattern piece to make up the difference. And then it's also a good idea to have a rotary cutter, a cutting mat, and an acrylic ruler for cutting out those rectangular sections or the pattern pieces that you need for your design. Now for the first illustration, I'm gonna use the Boomer Falls dress pattern. And you can see right here, this is the jacket and the dress just um, in a book format. And you can see right here is the example from the pattern where the pin tucks have been created before the pattern piece is placed on the fabric. And these line up with the placement lines for um, those particular pin tucks for the design of this bodice. So I'm gonna show you on the fabric we have how to create these pin tucks. For this illustration, I'm gonna begin my first row of pin tucks two inches down. So I'm simply just gonna move along the edge of my fabric and mark with the mark on the seam gauge tool um, two inches all the way across. And I can do that either by folding it this way and simply lining that up with my two inch line or I can mark that with a pen um, that will disappear, some sort of disappearing marking tool. So here I have two inches folded over. That's gonna give me an even fold line. I'm gonna check this at both sides where I have two inches and I'm just gonna press that along that line. So if I unfold that, you can see that I have my first fold line is two inches down from the top edge of my fabric. Now I'm gonna take this fabric over to the machine and I am gonna line that up with a seam allowance marking line on my machine and sew a 1 8 inch tuck from the fold line on this fabric and then I'm going to continue to measure, press, and stitch each tuck as I create it so that they're evenly spaced on this fabric. I find that this method gives me the most precise results when you're sewing such small garments. Now I'm at the machine and I have that fabric folded. This is my raw edge so I'm at two inches and I'm going to sew this just past the fold, an eighth of an inch, and I use this inside of my foot right here um, as my guide to create an even stitching line all the way down. Okay, now we're back at the ironing board. I have the first tuck sewn. I'm just gonna press this open and I'm gonna press my tuck in the direction down towards the fold. Then I'm gonna work my way across this line and I'm just gonna extend it right here another eighth of an inch. I'm gonna use the seam gauge tool and I have an eighth of an inch marked right along these little black marking triangles. So I'm just gonna slide that along here and make sure that I'm measuring an eighth of an inch up from the fold line to my second fold line. And then I'm gonna go ahead and just carefully press in my second tuck. Then I've taken this over to the machine and I've stitched a second row for the second tuck and it lines up an eighth of an inch in 
just under the first tuck. So it's not catching that tuck, it's just below that fold line. Then I'm gonna press this again in the direction pointing down towards the fold and I'm pulling this nice and tight so that I have a nice clean press on my tucks. And then I'm gonna go back through and I'm just gonna fold one more row. For this design I have three tucks pointing down and then they're spaced apart to a second section of three tucks. So we're just gonna go through here and I'm gonna measure again an eighth of an inch and make sure that I have an even fold line. And then I'm gonna go ahead and press down that third tuck. And you can watch right here as I stitch down just next to that fold line. And you can see here we have three even pin tucks all ready to be pressed down. Then to begin creating my second set of three pin tucks, I'm just taking that measurement right here, which is three eighths of an inch space between the first set and the second set starting. And I've gone ahead and just folded this and then pressed a line right here. And I'm gonna work my way down and then create three more pin tucks, space it apart and create three more pin tucks. And then I'll be able to set my pattern piece on here with the pin tucks placed in between these lines and I can cut that out and it will be ready to sew into my garment. Another method for creating the pin tucks is to start with your first press line and then if we're still creating eighth inch pin tucks, I'm just gonna measure a quarter inch um, between each fold and I'm gonna go ahead and press several rows of fold lines and then go stitch them all one at a time. So I'm gonna mark on my fabric and press a quarter inch up each time. So here you see I have three folded lines that are pressed a quarter inch apart and then I'm gonna take each one over on the machine and stitch them an eighth of an inch and then fold it back, stitch an eighth of an inch, fold it back and stitch eighth of an inch. Now I'm gonna go ahead and just press these pin tucks all down in the same direction. Now you can see here, these pin tucks overlap a lot more closely and they're also a little bit more inconsistent. So the first method that I showed is my preference. It is the, the most consistent way that I found to sew them by machine when you're sewing them um, on a standard sewing machine by yourself, one pin tuck at a time. This method can work, it just might require a little bit of playing around with your technique to really determine how much spacing you need between each tuck to make sure that your tucks lay consistently to fit an existing pattern piece. Now for this example, the pleats are designed to lay right on top of each other, so they're pretty close together. On the steam bib top, you're just gonna need to pay attention to the distance between each pleat as you press your next fold. So on here, we were measuring eighth inch from fold line to fold line, and on the steam top, you're gonna have more of a gap between each pin tuck as they lay on the shirt. So you just wanna pay attention to the directions in the pattern and press those lines at the distance that it specifies. Now here's a quick example of just a different idea. If you have a jacket sleeve and you're thinking you'd like to add in some pin tucks for some design interest um, along part of the sleeve, you can simply cut into the pattern piece and extend it if your sleeve narrows towards the hemline or if it's pretty consistent in size, you can simply extend that added amount of fabric to the end of the sleeve. So in this case, I've added about an inch just to give it enough room to add three little eighth inch pin tucks. And then um, if it's still a little bit too long, I can always trim down as I hem the sleeve. But I just wanted to make sure that in case I have any pressing or I'm off a little bit by my stitching, my sleeve isn't too short. So I've gone ahead and I've pressed my first pleat and I'm gonna use the same method I already illustrated to just add three eighths inch little tucks down um, from below the elbow to the hemline of the jacket. So now I have all of these pleats sewn and pressed and just to compare you can see 
that this is the same length now as my original sleeve. So I've added in that inch and I've created the three tiny little pin tucks and um, this is now ready to sew into the jacket and it will have that design interest um, on the lower portion of the sleeve. All right guys, I hope you were able to follow along and that you'll be able to use these techniques in some of the items and patterns that you have already purchased and are working on. And again, once you've created the pieces or you have any questions, just jump on over to the Facebook group and be sure to share those projects and ask those questions there. We're excited to work on this technique together with you.